Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is a six months of favorites video, things that I've been using consistently for the past six months and just keep going back to. Um, and I'm gonna start with the basics. I'm not gonna do too much tutorial with this. I might showcase one or two things, but um, there's a lot of products on my desk and I wouldn't typically use this many things in one look. I mean, I might, but I've already got a bit of makeup on. So I'm gonna start with Tower 28 SOS Mist and Y. This is an amazing, facial spray. It's not a setting spray. It's a skincare spray, essentially something that you would put on bare, dry, naked skin, um, not after moisturizer, but before moisturizers and serums, etc. cetera. It, hypochlorous acid is a very, very um, cleansing ingredient that helps to keep your skin really, really clean and just free from bacteria and stuff like that. So it's really good if you ever dermaplane. It's really good after any kind of like um, dermatology treatments. It's really good if you're breaking out. Um, I also use it sort of on my in my face when I've got a cold just sort of just the to kill any extra stuff that's around there and sort of near my mouth I guess um or if I've got a cut I'll spray it on a cut um or just like a little graze or something like that because it's literally just very simple basic ingredients does what it's supposed to do it has a really interesting scent slightly chlorine -y, but like in a really refreshing way it's hard to explain until you try it and you might not know what i mean by that but i love this and this gets a 10 out of 10 for me it also comes in mini sizes which i keep in my kit um, and it also comes in a refill size so that you can just keep one bottle and then just buy the refill size tower 20 sos mist for the win next the Dew Instant Angel Moisturizer. I'm a good friend of Charlotte and the team at Dew. I think they are amazing at what they do. I think they really provide factual information about skin and how skin care works and what lay how to layer things. And I always suggest actually to people to go follow Charlotte or Sophie Pavitt or Caroline Hirons or Shireen Idris, to name a few, when it comes to skincare stuff. Because I do not profess to be a skincare expert i profess to know how to prep skin well for makeup and this is why i love this puts a beautiful beautiful moisturizing layer underneath your makeup i don't use very much on myself but if i use it on somebody very very dry i would use more and it's just gorgeous gives you a nice sort of creamy plump layer i would say it's a more updated version of something like ombriolis from from france i might be wrong as far as charlotte is concerned as far as like the ingredient profile but as far as what the finish and what the texture and how it does under makeup, I would compare it to Umbrellis. My favorite SPF in the world is this one. This is Hyla B5 La roche Posay. I'm not sure if you can get this in America. I get this in England. Um, I love it. It's very, very, very dewy. It comes out a little bit blue. It's colorless entirely. And it just gives this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful radiance to the skin, all the while giving you an SPF of 30, which arguably is not strong enough for summer but for the winter or for just the times where you're working from where the window or if you're everybody has different spf sort of requirements this isn't the strongest it's not the weakest so i would say um look into what strength of an spf you want but i use this and i love it so much because it doesn't give a any kind of tone to the skin it just gives a beautiful radiance and glow with protection and then i'm going to get cr straight into complexion actually no sorry I'm gonna go to lip care. I'm obsessed with the Rode Peptide Lip Treatment. I put this on before I go to bed and it's got this lovely sort of emollientness that doesn't really like come off very quickly. Like it's still there when I wake up in the morning, which I really love. Um, and it's also just like a really beautiful hydrating lip balm with a glossy finish. So it can like double as, this is almost finished. It can double as a gloss and a lip balm. And that is that one. I love the watermelon flavor. This is the unscented. Um, I love that there's an option for unscented because not everybody wants scent. Um, and yeah, it's a great, great little product. Complexion. We're going to go right in to the three things that I... Thanks, Hannah. We're going to go right into the three things that I've been using the most over the past six months. Thanks, guys. Um, is the Synchro Skin Concealer from Shiseido. I use the shade 201. I do not use this as my sort of primary concealer. I'll use it as a brightener because it's quite awakening, for lack of a better word. Um, this shade on me, uh, but I really like just that little pop of light that it gives under the eye and around the eye or around the mouth. I wouldn't put this color all the way up here because it's too light for me up here. I mean, it blends away fine, but everybody's got a bit more pigment or a bit more color in their skin pretty much at the hairline. Unless you wear a hat every single day, that might be a different story. Um, but it's a really nice brightening concealer, which I use to just sort of pop a little bit of light into the skin and conceal at the same time. Next up, Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Balm. 
I went number three. What I think is really, really cool about this is it's basically like a foundation, powder, cream, balm with coverage. Doesn't give you too much shine all in one go. It's a very, very unique product. When I first tried this, I was like, I've never tried anything like this before. It's a huge pan. So like large, large, large amount of product you get for the price. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful product that you can just sort of skim around any areas of the face to give yourself some coverage. I would say it's like a 30% coverage from the beginning, but you can build it. And I like that about it. I like that I can get like, you know, for example, if my eyelid, I can get like a little coverage, but then if I just keep adding more, it gives me more. And I love a malleable, adjustable coverage in a product. And this is exactly that. I feel like I'm on QVC. I'm not mad at it. Maybe enough, maybe in my next career. So Janessa, Janessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Balm. Also comes with a little spatula to scoop out, but I don't use mine. And then for finishing complexion, I use this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury uh, number three shade, sorry, number one shade of the Airbrush Flawless Finish. I'm dropping everything today. Um, and I take a small brush and I just sort of pop it into the sides of my nose, under the eye. I don't press very hard. I just sort of go for it um, and just sort of tap it in. If the bristles are bending a lot, you're probably pressing a bit harder than necessary. That said, if you're trying to blend firm things away, you might need to press hard. So it's a bit of a contradictory statement. Um, brushes really quick. I'm gonna I do brushes and miscellaneous in the same category. So two brushes that I have been using like endlessly this year are the number seven from It Cosmetics and the number four from Rose Inc. This I use for bronzing um, and shaping and shading the face. This I use for concealer. So these are two amazing brushes that I think kind of everybody needs to own. Um, this is for concealer around the eyes. This is for big coverage around larger areas. This is for applying your contour product and the other side is for blending it out. Um, the brush side though could equally be used as foundation or concealer. So it really depends on how you use a brush. There's no right or wrong way to use either of these. You could even use this for bronzer. You could take this one put bronzer on in a small area and then blend it out with the big side so i like them both for different reasons are both necessary no which one would i say is more versatile that i think um the, the it cosmetics just because it's bigger you can like cover more ground with it you can put foundation on with this but i wouldn't put foundation on with that would i blend foundation with this no because it's too small and flat but everybody's different this is the Nabla freckle pen and I love this because it's just like a cute little freckle maker which I will just drop on in to the skin and just sort of do a little freckleage like that and it gives you a little bit of a sun kissed look all the while making your foundation not look heavy. And that's the reason why I would use freckles is if I've ever gone heavier with my complexion, I would use freckles to bring it back forward um, and make it look like my skin is see-through and like I've got no complexion on the face. And that one's from Nabla. Continuing on to brushes really quick. I'm just gonna be a little biased for a second. My Spectrum Collections collab are very, very, very dear to my heart. I love them so much. Um, number eight is definitely everyone's favorite. Also now available as a single. This is number two. I also think number two is available as a single um, as of recently. And then this is number one, the biggest in the set, which is great for like bronzing, contouring, even blushing if you like a large space of blush. Um, but these are very, very special. They are available in a 25 piece and 11 piece and now individuals. Um, and if you haven't yet tried them, maybe this is your sign. What else do I have on my table? On the subject of bronzer, back a step. This is the M Cosmetics shade, Terra shade of the M Cosmetics So Soft Stick. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and just sort of apply it. I'm gonna get a big coverage because I'm using the big side of the brush, but I love this because it just gives me that little hint of sort of contour really quick. I could also take the side of this brush and sort of use it like that and be more precise about my placement. But I really like this stick. It comes in a few shades, I believe. Um, and I like to just sort of put it on one area and then blend it through with a bigger brush. And then under the jaw as well. I'm gonna be careful because I'm wearing a white shirt. That is risky business. But I love, love, love these. I actually also love the strawberry shade, but it's um, finished. So I have another one coming in the mail. What else? Blush. 
The blush that I think I was most surprised that I actually loved and that I've continued to use is the new from um, YSL. And I think I've been using both shades. These are lip and cheek balms. I've been using both shades, but I'm gonna use chills just to show you what it looks like. It's like a berry. And what I think is so cool about these is like, I kind of would have expect, expected them to be like a bit moussey, a little bit like not even in application, but they are the absolute opposite. I don't, it's just the texture would have made me think that they don't have like the evenest application, but they blend like a dream. They kind of just turn into like a, a balmy, oily finish. Let me use a number two brush. Where are you? Um, the balmy sort of dewy finish, not oily. Oily is not the right descriptor at all, but do you see how easy that just blended in? And I even, even want to go in with more, I can pick up more with the brush and like, look at the back of my hand. It's not patchy. I mean, at all. And just sort of filled it. So I love these. I would, I would typically use more powder with this product because uh, it's balmy, but I'm also quite warm in my apartment right now. And it comes in another shade that I really like called Flush. There is one other shade that's more of like a peach. I'm not a peach blush, personally, person. My favorite mascara, it's no surprise, Tower 28 Make Waves. Um, I'm wearing it right now. Um, this is like at the end of its life, this tube. So considering it looks like this and it's like on its last legs, I think that that is pretty wild. Um, by saying it's on its last legs, I've had this one open for about three months. If you've not had an eye infection or you've not had any kind of things going on, use it until it's finished. If you've had it for a year, it's probably time to change. I would probably keep a mascara for a maximum of five months. Um, three is what says what it normally says on the bottom of the tube. Um, tube, um, actually don't see it on the bottom of this, so let me try and look, I can't get it out. My nails are too long. So yeah, use your own discretion. I typically keep a tube of mascara for myself personally for about five months, or unless it just dries up. Lip liner. The Nabla lip shapers are amazing. I love them so much. My favorite shade is actually number one, and I think I've put it in my kit, and my kit is not very accessible right now. So I'm gonna show you number two. This is the number two shade of the Nabla lip shaper. They are very, very different to the Makeup Forever pencils. These are more waxy, like for example, they're more of a waxy kind of texture, like the Urban Decay ones, or like the Mario. No, they're not similar to the Mario ones. They're close to the Urban Decay ones, I would say. But I love them and I, what I love the most about this range is that the shades. I love number one, perfect sort of soft lip shader that's not as dark as Endless Cacao, but that isn't too light either. Um, and number 2.5, which is the one I just used, is a little bit pinky. Um, and then another product, my last two products are actually by Mario, I think, yes. Checking my desk and all the products that I wanted to discuss. Last two products are from Mario. This is a new launch for Mario of this year, I believe, um, or last. I think it's this year moisturizing moisture glow plumping lip color this is a shade smoky pink i love these because they're kind of like a lip balm in the sense of like how they apply but they don't feel glossy they're they're kind of like a lip gloss but they're not they're not sticky they're like balmy and this one is kind of like this really interesting gray pink color which is great if you have a lot of pigment in your lips and you're trying to pull it down a little bit and create more of a nude so if you've got like a lot of color in your mouth and you want a nude but you don't like the look of that like opaque nude application this could be the perfect shade for you because it's just going to knock back your natural lip color a little and depending on how much you use you'll either get this kind of tone or you'll get less really it's totally a matter of how much of a product that you use and what the effect of it is my last product is a bit of a curveball something that i don't think i would use every day but something that i'm so glad that i own because it's a really fun product for your makeup bag and if you like shiny glossy bright things you will love it this is the master metallics palette from mario mine's well used and well loved this is where i mix and sort of have like a bit of playtime with a bit of a mixing medium but i love these you can totally use them like as they are um and just dry with your fingertip or a brush but if you mix them with a mixing medium they become like magic and i did like a full gold graphic eye with these a couple of, like a year ago or so they're just amazing they're so amazing and he's a genius love everything that Mario has made so far. And that, my friends, is it. I want to know if any of these are your favorites that you continuously use. Um, and if I'm missing something that I haven't, you don't see me use, but you think I would love, I want to know about it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. And you'll be notified of my next video. Lots of love. Bye.